Hi, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church in beautiful downtown Reading. My name is Deaconess Deborah, and I am here to welcome you on the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Um, this is the first service that you'll be watching that is being taped live. Um, so we're really excited about this. We will have more hymns, um, lessons, creed, full communion service. And so we are so grateful that we are able to gather together safely. You are welcome to come in person if you're ever in Reading. We meet at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And um, we do all the, the proper precautions. So there's, for those who are not vaccinated, we ask that you wear masks. And we also have lots of hand sanitizer and proper spacing. So please come and join us. So during today's worship, I invite you to listen. I invite you to listen for whose voice is being ignored or silenced and what messages God wants to send. So let us prepare our hearts and minds now as we listen to the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and with neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses and taking our sin to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in the good news. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Amos, the seventh chapter. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees, and the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Be God. Please join me as we responsively pray Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord is saying for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Through your salvation, 
Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Deborah? <laughs> Deborah? <laughs> Deborah? Oh. Time for the teaching time. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to open it. She's in there. Can you help me? Yeah. I asked Jacinda to come and help me for teaching time today. Because I didn't hear Pastor Allen, because you can. You're welcome to sit, you're welcome to, I don't know, we'll keep six feet apart, you can stand. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll interview you from here. Okay. Jacinda, yes. have you ever not listened to someone else? Mm. <laughs> and if so, why not? Um, so few times. Um, if I don't listen to my parents, I don't want to do something, or I'm probably like, I couldn't, I can't hear them because, because I like watch shows and stuff, so I won't be able to hear them say anything. And sometimes I won't listen to like other people, like if they're being rude or something, like I don't listen to them and I'll just like leave. That's really obvious. I think she deserves like a Rita's Ice this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jacinda. You can go back to your seat. I couldn't hear them because I wasn't listening, or I was playing a game or watching my shows. Sometimes we just don't want to hear what people have to say. So today in the gospel, I invite you to listen, to hear where someone doesn't like what John the Baptist has to say and what they do about it. So please pray with me. Dear God, help us when we don't want to listen to you. Open our ears. 
ears and our minds to your holy word that changes lives. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, just like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet Herod liked to listen to John but an opportunity came. When Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pre pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I'll give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, the girl rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus. Mom! Catherine's looking at me. Mom! Daniel hit me. Mom! For anybody who has had little children at home, siblings, cousins, you know that sometimes they tattle on each other. I can't remember the circumstances or who said what, but I do remember one of my children saying, Mom, they said the S word. And I thought, oh my gosh. You know, Peter and I, my husband, have not raised our children with vulgar language for them to hear. Um, so I was a little dismayed when one of our children chose to be so crude. After a few minutes, I understood that one of them indeed did use the S word. It was shut up. <laughs> Phew. But shut up is a really strong phrase. And we do discourage it in our family from using it. Because when you think about it, shut up. When you tell someone to shut up, you are telling them, don't speak anymore. You don't want to hear what they have to say. You are discounting their words and their opinions. 
It's the verbal equivalent of deliberately putting on your headphones and saying, la, 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 I'm not listening. Ooh, and it does cover a lot of noise. You and your voice are not important to me. In the Holy Scriptures, prophets tend to get told to shut up. When Amos had words to say to the kingdom of the north, the priest of Bethel, named Amaziah, dismissed his words and wanted him to go away. When John the Baptist publicly spoke out against the immoral relationship of Herod and Herodias, he was thrown into prison to shut him up. Because prophets of God often speak things that the rest of us would rather not hear. Amos wrote thousands of years ago, but his prophecy reads like a modern billboard. He's a good example how in the Bible, prophecy is not so much about foretelling events in the future. I predict this is what's going to happen. Rather, prophecy is more about forth telling the truth in the present. Not foretelling, but forth telling. You see, Amos lived during the rule of the Israelite king Jeroboam, Jeroboam II. He reigned for 41 years in the 8th century BCE. So Jeroboam II forged this northern kingdom, Israel, which was characterized by territorial expansion, aggressive militarism, and unprecedented economic prosperity. Enter Amos. He was blue-collar rather than blue-blooded. He admits that he was neither a prophet nor even the son of a prophet. Rather, Amos was a shepherd, a farmer, a tender of fig trees. He was a small town boy who grew up in the south. He was born in the southern kingdom of Judah. So you have the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah. And yet God called Amos to thunder a prophetic word to the powers that be in the northern kingdom of Israel. The cultured elites of the day looked down upon Amos as a redneck, an unwelcome outsider who told them things they'd rather not hear. Many people back then, just as people to today, interpreted their fine times, remember that unprecedented economic prosperity? They interpreted that as fine times because it was evidence of God's favor. I'm doing well in life. God is blessing me. I'm basically a good person. I'm a good Christian. I try to do my best, so I must deserve it. The people of Israel were intensely and sincerely religious, but theirs was a privatized religion, one that ignored the poor, the widow, the foreigner, the orphan. And worst of all, Israel's religious leaders sanctioned the political and economic status quo that exploited the weak. Cameron Howard reflects, throughout the book of Amos, and indeed throughout most of the prophetic books, the concerns of God are overwhelmingly focused on economic exploitation. The image of trampling upon or crushing the poor recurs over and over and over, along with a multitude of other depictions of the callousness and deceitful practices of those who gain wealth at the expense of the needy. These condemnations of those who actively conspire against the poor often appear alongside another less acknowledged image, an image of those who suppress the word for justice. They refuse to open their eyes to the suffering of their neighbors. 
Can we really blame Amaziah and Jeroboam for trying to silence this voice of Amos? Hmm. John the Baptist fares even worse. When he speaks out for justice and speaks out against the lifestyle of Herod Antipas and his wife. Now this gory gospel makes great material for Hollywood pictures, but the upshot of it all is that Herodias just wanted John to shut up. This biblical flashback in the Gospel of Mark, however, is not really about John, but it's placed in Mark's Gospel to help discern the question, who is Jesus? After hearing about the miraculous ministry of teaching and healing by Jesus and his followers, Herod actually thought that Jesus was John, coming back to life to haunt him. But for the reader who knows the rest of the story, we know that Jesus is much more. We know that Jesus, who sent disciples out to teach and preach and bring healing in his name, sends us out too. We know that Jesus, who endured suffering and death on a cross at the hands of those who did not want to hear his message, calls us to live differently. Jesus, who fed hungry ones and boldly spoke out against injustice, calls us to do the same. As followers of Jesus, we are called to step out of where we are comfortable, to actively work for God's shalom for all creation, and to stand in solidarity with those whom it is so easy to forget, for those whose voices are not yet heard. To learn more about the work that our Lutheran Church does, I invite you to go to the ELCA website where you can learn about ELCA advocacy or our world hunger issues. There is so much that our church is doing that we can join in, that we can participate in that work because we need to hear the voices of those whom it is so easy to forget. There are those who lack access to clean water those who lack access to basic education and health care. For us cocooned in comfort, we easily can forget those who every day encounter the evils of homophobia and racism and classism and sexism and all other kinds of isms that are out there. And we cannot stand by reasoning since we don't see it or feel it or hear it it's not my problem. On the days when we want to retreat in the comfort of our own world, when we hoard our resources for fear of not having enough, when we just want to leave on the headphones, listen to the things that we want to hear, we must actively put aside the headphones. We must actively make room to hear God's messages to us, even when we don't want to hear it or acknowledge it. Because as our UCC brothers and sisters say, our siblings say, God is still speaking. Through scripture, through creation, and yes, through the voices of others. Because when confronted with prophetic truth, we are called to respond. Our lifestyles, our attitudes, and our actions speak. And we, who too, we are called to be passionate prophets. We are to remind the world of the Christ who openly witnessed to the intrinsic divine presence within all of humanity. We dare tell of the risen Christ we dare tell others that they are loved and forgiven and precious in God's eyes. This is our call, to share the message of God's shalom in words and actions. And I believe this is a message that cannot and will be shut up. Amen.
we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy Parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. We pray for Christ Episcopal and Father John, for Grace Lutheran and Pastor Burl, for St. John's Lutheran in Moulton and Pastor Wayne, for Trinity staff, and we pray for Common Ground and Pastor Tom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our awesome Creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth. Nourish the growth of fruit grain and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and the immigrant. Protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. And heal those who are sick. We pray for Mary, Steve, Luther, Jan, Walter, Nancy, Rich, JoLynn, Darlene, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we pray for this holy house and all those who worship here. We pray especially today for Jay, Albert and Susan, Larry, Lars and Eric, Charles and Susan, and Ralph and Pamela. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, and prophets who have died in the faith. We remember those in this community who have recently died. United with them as God's children, assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Please. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the greening earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your 
your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God invites you to this table of bounty. Come, the banquet is ready.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.